Hey, I know. Let's put some stuff in jars. Come on, guys. Hey, hey, you too. Welcome back to Arabin Outdoors. Hey, I'm Arabin. But you knew that, didn't you? Hey, guys. As promised, today I'm going to start my dry canning adventure. Never done it before. This is my first time. Although, I have done a lot of research into it. I have watched countless YouTube videos on the process. I have read dozens of articles. I've done my research. And I think combining a lot of what I read and saw, I think I've got a good handle on it. So, I want to share that with you. And hopefully it'll be something that you'll find interesting as well as useful. So, that being said, let's get going. Okay, so today we're going to be dry canning dried goods. And uh, that's exactly what I'm going to show you. But first I want to talk about why dry canning. Number one, dry canning extends the shelf life of your dried goods. Number two, it prevents rodents. Number three, it kills bugs and larvae. Number four, much easier storage. And finally, number five, proportions. Not having to open up a 20 pound bag of rice when you only want a few cups. All right, there, so there you go, guys. Five reasons why dry canning is a good thing to do. All right, so now let's get on with the canning. All right, so what I've done is I have broken this up into 10 steps that you need to go through to complete the process. So let's start with step number one, gathering the supplies you need. All right, so of course, you're gonna need some jars. So I just did a video about this, guys. These little boys are hard to find. So my advice on step number one, getting what you need, first thing, of course, is jars. When you can find them, buy them. All right, so well, the jars I've gone with are ball mason jars. They are one quart, and uh, they are the wide mouth, okay? Now, you don't have to get the wide mouth, and you don't have to get one quart size. You can get a pint. You can get a half gallon. But from what I have researched, you want to get the best quality jars that you can. All right, so in addition to the jars, you want to make sure you get the jars that are vacuum sealable, okay? So you will have also the lids, and the rims that go on the jars. Now you got your jar, you need something to put in them. Some type of dry good, okay? Today, I'm gonna to be doing some of these elbow pastas. I'm gonna be doing some long grain white rice, and then I'm gonna be doing some 15 bean soup. 15 different beans in one bag. So, other things that you might need, I would recommend getting one of these jar grabbers. And they work like this, you just grab the jar and it grips it so you can take the jar out of the oven and transport it to where you're going to be working without touching or grabbing and burning your hands. So a good idea to get this. You can pick these up at Walmart. Um, if you don't have those, that's okay. You can use an oven mitt or pot holders. But when these things come out of the oven, they're going to be hot. So you're going to need a way to transport them. That sounds like common sense, but hey. And I picked this up on Amazon for like four or something, five bucks. And it came with a set of three set different sizes. This is a collapsible funnel. And uh, this one will fit these wide mouth jars very well. And it's just going to make it easier to pour the stuff in there. You don't have to have one, but hey, 
four bucks for a set of three. I thought they were pretty nifty. All right, so in addition to that, all you need is an oven, okay? So uh, let's move on to step number two now. All right, and that step number two is you want to wash your jars and your lids. You want to wash them in hot, soapy water, and you want to rinse them very well. I'm not showing you that step because I don't want to bore you with it, but I've already done it, and the jars are right here. They're already washed in hot water. I've washed the lids. They're over here drying. Some people think that that's really all you need to do. But I'm going to take it the extra step, and I'm going to make sure that I do it properly. Okay? And that'll be step three. All right, so on to step three. Step three is you want to heat your already washed jars in the oven. So I have already preheated my oven to 250 degrees. All right, so now I'm gonna put the jars into the oven. And basically I've got a cookie sheet in here that I can put the jars on. I'm just gonna slide it right out, take the jars. Right now they're not hot. They're a little bit warm from the hot water and uh, I'm going to put them here on the cookie tray. And this cookie tray that I have, I don't know what size it is, but eight jars fit on it very well. Alright, so now I'm going to slide them in and shut the oven. Alright, now what they say, what I've learned is that you want to let them stay in the oven anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. So. I'll be back with you guys in 20 to 30 minutes. Alright guys, while those jars are uh, in the oven sterilizing, I want to share something with you. And uh, it's actually two things. One, if you don't already know, God loves you. And number two, He will never fail you. I just wanted you to know that in case you weren't aware. Alright guys, welcome back to Urban Outdoors. We're canning dry goods. We're on step three, which is heating the jars after cleaning. It's been 30 minutes, so now it's time to remove the jars. Now, what you want to do first is prepare the area where you're going to put the jars. Okay? And, uh, and you got to remember, these things are going to be hot, okay? So, you're going to need somewhere to put them where they're not going to, like, burn through or something like that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this box, but I'm going to put a, a damp towel down in there. And that's what I'm going to put the jars on. This is the same box that the jars came in. So, let's go to the oven. Let me get my pot holder. And let me pull the shelf out. All right, I'm going to use that jar holder that I told you guys about. Give it a try. I've never used them before, but pretty simple concept. And there you go. All right, so now we just do this with all eight jars. All right, so there we go. Eight jars. These things are hot, people. Alright, so we're on step four now, which is to remove the jars from the oven and fill them with the dry goods. So, we'll start with the elbow macaroni. And these things are cheap, guys. Each box of these were a dollar at Walmart. And each box is 32 ounces. So you want to fill the jars now with your item. That's when this funnel is going to really help, I believe. Basically, you want to fill it up, not all the way to the top. They say you want to leave, and see I put too much in there. No, that's good. And then you want to uh, kind of shake the jar to uh, get it to where it settles good. Alright, and then we're just going to fill up, uh, keep going, fill up another one. All right. 
right. I'm right, gonna take one more box. I'm gonna do two boxes of these, so it's gonna take four jars. And do the other half in another jar. Like I say, once you get them filled, you want to kind of shake them a little bit, let, it, let everything settle down in there. And if they're not exactly even, that's all right, I guess. I mean, if you want to, like this one's got a little bit more than that one. I can get a spoon, take some out of one, and put in the other if I want to, just to make them level. But you do want to leave a little bit of head space in there and I'll show you on this jar when you uh, have the lid off of the jar you'll see that first line right there so that's about you don't want to go any higher than that in that first line right there and that's what happened on these now I'm going to work on some rice all right and I'm going to do the same thing, I'm going to fill them to that spot, that first line on the jar. I'm going to put the rice in there. And just uh, fill it up to that one line. Alright. Do another jar. Alright. Open up the bigger bag here. I'm not going to do all this rice right now on this video. I am going to finish up the rest of this rice today in my other drawers. I'll probably have enough here to... Oops. Right now I'm just going to do two drawers of rice. A little bit more in there. You want to maximize the use of your drawers, but again, you don't want to put more in there than you should. Like I say, you want to leave some head space. All right, and again, just like with the other, shake it down, make sure everything is settled good, down to the bottom. All right, just like that. Now, the last two jars, we're going to do this 15 bean soup. And I don't know how many jars I'll be able to do with these, but let's find out. So one bag of these is a little more than, not quite a full jar. So I've got three bags, we'll see what I can do. I do have some one pint jars that were just dropped off on my door that I ordered, which are smaller, of course, than the one quart. So if I have any leftover, but not enough to do a quart, I can use those pint sized jars. Right, and the last bag of the 15 bean soup. Put that top off. Go over in there, fill it up to that line. And there we go. Alright, then again, again, just like with the other ones, you want to make sure that you get them all settled down in there. Alright, so that was step four, filling the jars. Now, on to step five. All right, step five, what you're gonna wanna do, we talked about one of the top five reasons to dry can is to kill the larva that is sometimes found in dry goods when you buy them from the store. So we wanna make sure that we kill any of those bugs or larva that might be in the rice or whatever it is we're canning. Not at our fault, okay? All right, so step five, we want to put these back in the oven at the same temperature for 30 minutes, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that. 15 minutes later. Alright guys, it has been 15 minutes. So it's time, even though it hasn't been a full 30, it's time for step 6. And that is to put your lid tops, the lids, and the rims into the oven for 15 minutes, which is the last 15 minutes that the jars are in there. So what I've done is, I have washed a little baking pan like this. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the uh, jar lid and the rings inside of here. Just having them in the little baking pan like this. So we're going to put these in here, close it up, and we're going to wait for the remaining 15 minutes. Check back with you then. 15 minutes later. All right, guys, here we are. It's been 15 minutes since we put the lids and rims in, and it's been 30 minutes since we put the filled jars. Now, step seven, remove the jars and the lids from the oven. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, here we go guys, step seven is complete. We have removed the filled jars and the lids from the oven. Let's move on to step eight. All right, step eight is what you wanna do is you wanna get a clean paper towel or you could use a clean dish wall. Take that dish cloth or paper towel, dampen it. Not soaking it wet, so wring it out. You just want it to be a little bit damp. Then you want to gently wipe around the top rim of each jar and this is just removing any granules or bits that might have fallen on the jar that could interfere with the vacuum sealing and the tightness of the lid once we put it on step all right eight. on to step number nine now we're almost done put the lids onto the jars all right so you just want to grab it don't touch the inside if you can help it place the lid on there and then take your, uh, I told you they're a little bit warm. And then just do that. And what you want to do, you might want to put your mitt on for this. Because you want to, basically you want to hand tighten them. You don't want to over tighten them. But you want to hand tighten the jars. Put that one on there. Basically. And you might need the mitt, mitt to hold the jar while you tighten it a little bit, okay? All right, I'm going to go ahead and do that for all eight jars now. All right, there we go, guys. That is done. Now, all the jars are filled with the product. The jars have been washed, they've been sterilized, the lids have as well. We put the item in the oven so all the larva or bugs that might have been in there, they're going to be dead, okay? Now we've put the lids on, we're going to wait for them. You will hear in a couple of minutes, each of these cans are going to make a little ding noise. Talk to you on an empty one. It's going to make a little pop sound like that. And that little round raised bubble there will sink in and then that's how you know that the jars have sealed and they're ready to go on to step 10. all right and that final step is just to let the cans cool all right you want them to cool for as long as it takes for them to get down to room temperature and then once they've cooled down and you're sure that they have all sealed properly you're ready to put them into your long-term food storage all right, guys, it didn't take too long for these uh, lids to start making that popping noise. And uh, I'll show you one. And I don't know how well this is going to come out, if you're going to be able to tell or not. But if you'll see, uh, it's still a little warm. On this top, it's kind of sunk in right there. And when it popped, that lid sucked in, and that's what made me assured that this can is airtight and once all these cans get popped um, most of them have a, a couple haven't yet and then once they cool down they'll be ready for storage all right guys so there we go we have done some dry canning of dry goods my first attempt and i'm very happy with it it is a little bit of a lengthy process but well worth it in the end 
What did we accomplish here? Well, now we have food that we can add to my long-term storage, okay? You'll get different numbers when you talk to different people about how long will this stuff be good for. I've heard people say from 15 to 25, even up to 35 years, this rice will be good in this jar. Now, I don't know how true that is, but it definitely does extend the life of it as compared to how it would be in its original packaging. Another thing we're doing, again, we talked about this earlier, preventing rodents. A bag or a box, a rodent can chew through easily. Rodents can't chew through glass, all right? So we're preventing rodents from destroying our investment of this long. Oh, there goes another one that popped. All right, which one was that? This one. All right, so uh, preventing rodents. And then by putting them in the heat, baking them in the oven, we've killed any bugs or larva that might have been hanging out in there from when it was come from the farm into the bag and all that. Something you don't want to think about, but it's a reality. We've taken care of that. If we just left the box in there for a few years and opened it up, who knows what you're going to find, all right? Now, also what we've done, cans can be stacked, they can be stored easy, and it's a lot easier to store these jars than in biz big 20 pound bags of rice. And then the last thing we talked about is proportions. If we don't need but a few cups of rice, if we had it in a bag and we cut that bag, how are we going to reseal that bag to protect the product? But if we only need a few cups of rice, now we can take this jar, okay? We can open it up, get out what we need, and that way we don't have to open up a whole giant bag and then try to go through it as fast as we can. We can use what we need when we need. So we've accomplished a lot in this time. And uh, we've got eight total jars. I made two rice, four elbow macaronis, and two 15 bean soups. I have some more jars. I'm going to do some more rice later. But anyway, hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it was helpful. And I hope that you at least realize the importance of long-term food storage and the advantages of dry canning your dry goods. So, appreciate you guys coming along. Until next time, keep calm, carry on, keep it outdoors.